Good morning and welcome to the National Building Museum. Uh, it is my privilege to serve as the director here and to welcome you all to the new uh, How Housing Matters Conference, a project of the National Building Museum in partnership with the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation and the Office of Policy Development and Research at the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Housing matters. Access to secure and affordable housing impacts children's education, employment opportunities, physical and mental health, and long-term neighborhood development. This conference today will present new interdisciplinary research and case studies from across the United States that aim to inform both policymakers and practitioners. The program builds on the MacArthur Foundation's five-year, $25 million How Housing Matters initiative, as well as on the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development's strategic initiative, exploring housing as a platform for education, health, and economic opportunity. The National Building Museum has long explored the issue of housing throughout our 30-year history. For those new to the museum, we are America's leading cultural institution dedicated to exploring and celebrating all of the building arts, including architecture, landscape design, engineering, construction, and planning. Chartered by Congress in 1980, the museum has become a vital forum for exchanging ideas and information about the built environment through our exhibitions, our education programs, and publications. And we have long explored the critical issue of housing through an interdisciplinary lens. We invite you to come back to the museum next April when the museum will open a new exhibition titled House and Home that will examine the history of American residential architecture and home life. To celebrate the exhibition opening and augment its content, the museum will produce a symposium titled Housing for Seniors on April 26th. At this event, a wide range of designers, policymakers, and practitioners will present real-world uh, case studies to address the issues of housing for an aging population. And you can, of course, find more information about that soon on our website, nbm.org. It is now my great pleasure to introduce a good friend of the museum, the Honorable Raphael Bostic, Assistant Secretary, Office of Policy Development and Research, U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Raphael will be followed by Julia Stash, Vice President, U.S. Programs, the John D. and Catherine T. MacArthur Foundation, who will be moderating our keynote conversation. Please welcome Raphael Bostic. Good morning, everyone. It's good to see such a robust crowd so early in the morning. Uh, in my building, I'm the early one. I'm usually the only one roaming the halls at this time. Well, actually, Marge is there, too. I'm sorry, Marge. Um, but it's good to get people up and out and uh, talk about something that is uh, very important to all of us. Chase, thank you for the kind introduction and for helping to set the stage. How housing matters. It's actually a very simple phrase. It's quite interesting. It's remarkably basic in its conception. But it's one that really hasn't animated uh, the imagination and the action of researchers nationwide and across the world until now. And until a couple of visionaries in Chicago came up with an idea to advance this notion and see if we could get people's attention. You actually, I think everyone here knows these visionaries. Uh, and both of them are actually linked to me in a pretty direct way. One, Mike Stegman, preceded me at PDNR and set in motion many of the powerful initiatives that we do at HUD that I'm trying to continue to make sure that we carry out, including perhaps the, the signature initiative that we've done, the Moving to Opportunity demonstration. You may have heard of that one, and I'll say a little bit more about that later. The other is Erica Pothig. She now works in my group, and she technically reports to me. Um, I say technically because those of you who have worked with Erica know that she doesn't really work for anyone. Rather, she just works you to get to where we all need to be. 
And if you're smart, and I like to count myself among that group, uh, you just go with it because she's usually pretty on target. And uh, you allow yourself to let Erica take you where we need to go. And both of them uh, have done tremendous work in putting this together, getting us to this place, and both of you should be saluted. I thank you for all that you've done in terms of your energy and your persistence. Uh, you've changed my life directly and the lives of so many uh, with the goal of trying to make sure that people have better quality housing and ultimately better quality uh, lives generally. So how housing matters. I'm really excited about today. It's uh, been a long road to get here. It's been a lot of work and a lot of effort. And it's good to see this come to something concrete where we all can talk about it in, uh, in interesting ways and as a community of housers. And I say that, I like to say that actually, because very few people think of themselves as housers. Relatively fewer people than should actually be thinking about it. And we all need to acknowledge that we are a large community, an important community, and an interlinked community. So I'd ask you to look around, see the people who are here, look for some unfamiliar faces, people who you haven't seen before, go talk to them, and make sure that this community and this network is a network that is strengthened from this and continues to grow ever stronger as we move forward to make sure that housing matters in ways that are uh, important and that we all understand and feel. I know at HUD, and I'm going to speak for our partners at the National Building Museum and the MacArthur Foundation, uh, we know that housing matters. We see it every day. And I'm confident and hopeful that at the end of today, uh, we'll be re-energized in that appreciation and have a deeper understanding about how it matters and what we can do to make sure that more people understand that it matters in the areas of education, in economic opportunity, and in health. HUD believes that housing can be a platform to improve the quality of life for people. And we have made this one of our strategic goals for 2010 and 2011. You know, when we started saying the phrase housing as a platform, uh, we actually paid some people to go and ask folks, what does that mean, housing as a platform? And we weren't getting consistent perspectives on that. People had all kinds of views about you know, what housing as a platform is supposed to represent. Well, let me tell you what I think it means, at least. Uh, I think housing as a platform really means that if you house people well, uh, they do better in all other aspects of their life. Housing is a foundation for people's experiences and for what they are able to achieve and accomplish. If we house people well, other things, good things, happen. Now, it was in our strategic plan, but we've actually done more than plan. And there's a host of our initiatives uh, that make clear that we are doubling down on the notion that housing is a platform. There's work that we're doing on homelessness, homeless demonstration, to make it clear that if you house the homeless well, um, they wind up better and our costs to society are reduced dramatically. There's work that we're doing around people with HIV and AIDS to make clear that if you house people well, we actually still have them around uh, and mortality rates drop dramatically. There's work on foreclosure that we are working on to make clear that if you can keep people out of foreclosure, if you get them into sustainable mortgage products and sustainable home ownership, they wind up living better. There's work on neighborhoods. We have a neighborhood revitalization initiative where, we make, where we're linking our housing programs with uh, education programs, Promise Neighborhoods, with health, community health centers, and with uh, public safety uh, through burn innovation grants with the idea that, and the belief that if we house people well and we link them to these other things, uh, amazing things will happen. So that's a lot, but we actually need more, and that's why I'm very excited to see so many people here in the crowd. Uh, we need more evidence. We need more demonstrations. We need more pilots, because we need everyone to understand that housing is a platform, uh, and how housing as a platform affects people's lives. 
And that's the value of the How Housing Matters initiative, and that's the value of uh, everything we're going to do today. Now, I want to make clear that housing as a platform, this notion of housing intersecting with other parts of people's lives, isn't a new concept. You know, so, you, know you often hear people say, there are no new ideas. There are only ones that are realized and executed a bit better. Um, and that's certainly true in this concept and in, the, in this context. And it's important, it's actually quite timely, uh, that we last week, I guess last week, two weeks ago, I think it was two weeks ago, started rolling out results for our Moving to Opportunity demonstration, or MTO. MTO started in 1992. Uh, so it is a long, live demonstration. And it's an interesting demonstration because it was designed with the notion that we want to explicitly test the notion that where people live matters, that neighborhood matters, and that how, they are, how, how people are housed in those neighborhoods actually matters. And we focused, the initial focus on education, it was on employment, and it was on uh, uh, job outcomes. Some of the biggest results, perhaps the biggest result, was in an area we didn't really expect, in health. And the results of the demonstration made clear that people who were able to move, this is mobility access, uh, had significant impact in reducing the incidence of extreme obesity and in diabetes. The phrase, I guess, is diabetes. Everyone go home. If there's one thing to take from the, today is there's a diabetes epidemic that we have in communities. Uh, and if we deal with diabetes, if, these, if this extreme obesity and, and diabetes, uh, we change fundamentally, I'm going to talk like an economist now, but we change the household balance sheet uh, and allow people to be much more stable in their lives uh, and, and take them further from the edge of extreme vulnerability. A tremendous finding and one that frankly, was not even in our radar screen uh, when we started the demonstration, but one which has translated into, I think, real food for thought for all of us who think about housing as a platform. There was more food for thought in the study, however, and that food for thought uh, came in the reality or the discovery that um, this mobility didn't seem to affect people positively in terms of work, or earnings or other economic outcomes, which is frankly not what we expected. Um, so the question is, what do we take from this? Some would say that the answer is, well, mobility, neighborhood, none of this stuff matters for education. You can put people anywhere, and we will not expect significant changes. I actually don't think that's the right conclusion. And I think that uh, the, the information in the study and how it played out made clear that Although people moved to lower poverty neighborhoods, they didn't move to low poverty neighborhoods. Even among our movers, uh, the poverty rate was 31%, which by most objective standards is extremely high, right? And so I'm not sure it's, it's the right conclusion to say that moving doesn't matter, uh, but there may be some threshold effects that we need to understand better. And that might be a charge for one or some of you to explore uh, in your research uh, moving forward. As I said, we just released the MTO report. Uh, the summary, there's a summary of findings that's available here. You should go check it out at our kiosk, take it, and uh, make it widely available. Uh, and the full report is available at www.huduser.org. That's the PDNR website. I would encourage all of you to go to that website regularly. We need as many hits as we can get to make sure that people know that we're, we're there. And join the web list, because uh, we send out announcements about things that we're doing, about interesting uh, exercises and initiatives as we move forward, things like this. I also want to say that MTO made clear that housing as a platform is real. Uh, we're doing a number of other initiatives that also are, are built upon that platform. I talked about choice neighborhoods as part of our neighborhood revitalization initiative. I'd be remiss if I didn't mention our sustainable communities work the idea that uh, we need to make sure that communities are linked so that housing actually uh, provides people with real access to jobs and amenities uh, that are available region-wide. And I want to 
say that it's important uh, that as we go forward, we try to identify as many places, as many uh, intersections as possible uh, where housing intersects with things that are important to us and lift that up. And you know, I was thinking about my remarks this morning and um, thought of an interesting challenge for all of you, which would be when you write your papers, when you write your blogs or your articles, try to get the phrase, how housing matters in there. Right? Let's, let's make this something that people start to see on a regular basis so that it becomes just understood, part of our collective understanding about how people live. Uh, I know I'm going to try to do that, uh, and I would encourage all of you to, as well. I'm running out of time, so I want to make sure I do some things before I, I get off the stage. First, I want to thank the National Building Museum uh, and the MacArthur Foundation. Both of you have done uh, yeoman work here in putting this together. I love having events here, uh, and I love working with MacArthur, two of the finest organizations that you could possibly work with. I want to specifically call out Scott Kratz. He's done a tremendous, I mean, hours and hours and hours of work to pull this off, and his diligence and his attention to detail, I think, will come clear as we go through the day. Iana Kachuras and Julia Stash. Julia will be following me in a moment here from MacArthur. Uh, tremendous partners. And it's been wonderful to work with you. And it's important that you know that we really appreciate all that you do. We're just very happy to be af affiliated with this project and this program. This is you know, it's part and parcel. It's central to everything that we do. I think it's one of the reasons why it wasn't hard to get our secretary here. And uh, the housing as a platform concept is one that made, made it easy for us to get uh, Secretary Sebelius here as well. Um, I could talk all day about my team. My team is wonderful. And they've really, they make me look good every day. And I'm really happy to have them work for me. Uh, I've already talked about Erica, who was wonderful. I would also like to call out Rochelle Levitt, who is the director of our research utilization group. Uh, who has been instrumental in making sure that, that everything, every I is dotted and T is crossed, and it's been, been wonderful, so thank you as well. Then I want to offer a final thanks to everyone here uh, for all your work, the energy and excitement to join up. I understand that this thing sold out in a matter of days. Um, that, that, that enthusiasm is something that I'm hopeful will carry forward as we go uh, and continue to work uh, in the months and years to come. Uh, and it's good to see so many people who believe, as HUD does, that housing matters. It's really uh, encouraging, and it makes it easier to go to work every day. So thank you all for coming, and I look forward to the sessions today. You'll see me a little later on in a, on a panel. Uh, this is going to be a really great day. So Julia, thank you. Good morning. I really thought when Raphael talked about how quickly this uh, conference sold out, you know, when you compare domains, I guess, in our world, this is sort of like a Lady Gaga concert selling out immediately. Uh, we have a long way to go, but I think we've made a really good start here. So I want to add my thanks, of course, to the leadership of the uh, National Building Museum. This is the best building, not only in our capital, but one of the best buildings in the country. Raphael and, of course, my good friend and former colleague, Erica Poltig, are wonderful, wonderful partners in this whole notion of how housing matters. I don't want to take credit for the uh, phrase, how housing matters, but my God, we said it a thousand times a day at MacArthur. And one of the reasons we did is that housing is a big deal at MacArthur. By next year, we will have uh, invested more than $300 million in both grants and program-related investments. And we have a top team working on housing right now. There are two big teams at MacArthur, housing and conservation. We do many other things, but housing, led by Mike Stegman with his colleague, Ayana Kachoris, uh, back home, uh, Deborah Schwartz and Mio Vodapich. We have a really top team, and they are really, really happy to be working with all of you and supporting your work. Now, this $25 million five-year initiative on how housing matters is not just about random research, 
when folks bring it to us. It's about a very specific effort to bring evidence to bear on a critical question for our society. I mean, if there's one thing we know now is that the word connected is the key word for our era. It used to be okay to think about things one at a time in a linear way, one thing after another. But if anything has shown us, like the recent fiscal crisis has, we ignore the notion of connectedness at our, at our own peril. So this initiative, this MacArthur Initiative, is meant to support you, bring researchers together with practitioners so that research informs practice, practice tees up the questions for research so we have a virtuous cycle of information that reinforces something we know, which is housing matters. What we don't know enough about is exactly how it matters. And until we know how it matters, we cannot have as smart an array of policies that we really need, particularly in an era when we're going to have no money. So no money means we have to be really, really smart. And I think what you're doing in your own domains and together is what's going to make sure that we have smart policies. One of the things that uh, is part of MacArthur's overall uh, focus on housing was the recently announced Bipartisan Policy Center Housing Commission. Not to diminish the challenges of fixing the broken delivery system for housing, which is one of the challenges of the Bipartisan Policy Center Housing Commission. But after, we, after that commission has taken care of that, and I don't know what that means, but what they need to do is also look forward to what should housing policy be for the next generation, the next generation of our society. And what they will be grappling with is the fact that housing policy is education policy. Housing policy is health policy. Housing policy is crime policy. Housing policy is community development policy. And if that's true, housing policy is at the core of the well-being of the society and the competitiveness that we have as a nation. So let's not underestimate how important what you are engaged in is. So we look forward not only to supporting the research and the conversations that flow from the connectedness among all of you, but to continue to build that body of evidence to make sure that we make the smartest policy decisions uh, that we can.